motherhood, but not quite as we imagine. Thought-provoking, refreshing, straightforward, sometimes taboo. Often seemingly ordinary, but always honest. Welcome to School for Mothers, opening conversations we all need to have, exploring ways in which you can be fulfilled as a woman, once a mother. Now, here is your host, mother of 10, Danusha Melina Durban. Hello and welcome to the School for Mothers podcast. I'm Danusha Melina Durban, your host, and today I thought I'd share another time when I was guest on someone's show. This time when I was featured on Emma Stroud's Clowning Around podcast. Em is a one-off speaker, MC, and recent author of a brilliant book called Lessons from a Clown, which will give you a clue that her clown shows up in our interview here. Listen out for her. Let's get going, shall we? Emma Stroud and I, in conversation. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Clowning Around. Oh, it's so lovely to have you here and yes, I'm going to do it again. I am excited. Uh, I'm excited because today, ladies and gents, we are going to be chatting Clowning Around Motherhood. Bam, bam, bam. Now, I couldn't really think of anybody better to have uh, talking about motherhood than the absolutely brilliant the sort of complete and utter sort of powerhouse she's going to hate me for saying this <laughs> uh listen you can already hear it and the the founder of school for mothers yes that's right school for mothers Danusha Melina Durban hello my lovely well hello can I reach for my vomit bowl <laughs> yeah if you could that would be ideal I was I was actually going to carry on and big you up even more and then I oh, just yes. went no that's probably enough yeah that's enough just just get them with the vagina Yes, exactly. Just just hit them with the vagina. There we go. We've done that. She's done loads of cool things. And uh, yeah, we're going to chat all things motherhood, aren't we, today? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I do know a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, you know a little bit about it because you've got 10, mm. haven't you? Ten yes, of those, I do. 10 mm. of those little people, all various heights. Yes, yes, they are. Yes. Various Actually, heights. I do. I do tend to birth small ones. Well, I, mean, I always think that's a good idea to at least start birthing with them being small. <laughs> no, I meant they're short sweet. to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're oh, short. I see, I see, I see. Now, for all of my good regular listeners, um, which I think that's probably about 15 now. I started on <gasps> seven, so I've now Great. gone to 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's huge, huge. Um, they will know that I always start clowning around with 10 quick fire questions about the subject of which you are an expert. Are you ready? Definitely. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to build up the anticipation by sort of singing or rather not singing some quiz music. There you go. I don't know what that was, by the way. That was, that was, that was me doing a crap who wants to be a millionaire, which I think. <laughs> so if you imagine studio lights, so if you're listening to this as you're walking, she's feeling under pressure. Are you feeling slightly anxious about this or are you still completely fine? You're fine. I'm aren't sweating. You? <laughs> yeah, gentle bead of sweat running down, going, mm. is she going to know anything about motherhood? Mm. Okay, question number one of ten. Uh, what animal is motherhood? Uh, it's uh, a panther. Obviously. <laughs> uh, what does motherhood mean to you? Uh, it's the hellish mess uh, of, of, of love. Oh, gosh, I love that. Uh, why does motherhood scare you if it does? Mm. that's because we devalue mothers all around the world oh my god we're getting so deep already we're only on question three jeez <laughs> this is good uh when have you felt fully in command of motherhood if you ever have pretty well every day for glimpses of it <laughs> I love that. You have taken my, the, I'm going to answer this succinctly, beautifully. Well done. Uh, what, <laughs> everyone's like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. She's finished. Uh, what, what object is motherhood? I'm not sure it's one object, to be honest with you. I think it's a, it's a whole bucket load and it's not just the bucket. So it's, 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 you know, it's, God, it's everything. I don't know. I just, Ask me another more intelligent question then. <laughs> I love that. You see, for some things, these questions really sit really well. And then I was thinking about you before we started recording it. And I was like, object of motherhood. Object. Mm, I don't know. 
know. I don't know. That could be really awkward. If you, you know, especially if you're like, oh, what object? Um, a car. Why? Because then I can run away from my children. Anyway. Uh, a speculum. You... I mean, yeah. a speculum, a frying pan. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I know, I know, I know. It, but they're, they're quick fire questions. They mean that nothing or plenty, depending on how you hear it. Uh, if you, don't worry, there's only four more. If you fully own motherhood, what happens? <sighs> Oh, if you fully, fully oh, own it. I see you it. like this question. Huh? Huh? See? Huh. What you thinking? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if you fully own it. Oh, God. Well, for some women, I mean, it, it means complete annihilation of themselves, doesn't it? If I fully Ooh, own it. Oh, political. I like it. Carry on. If I fully own it, then I stay true to myself and I, and I advocate, for my, advocate for my children. I think that's what it is. Mm, I like that. Mm. Uh, who makes you think of motherhood? Oh, God. Oh, oh, the millions of narratives around the world about motherhood. They're everywhere telling us what to do and be and how to behave. And, and apart from that, um, you know, looking in the fucking mirror. <laughs> if you're a mother, I guess so. That makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Bye, mirror. Yes, exactly. And this is, and you're like, oh, look, there's me, mother of 10, in the mirror. Who makes you think of motherhood? Me! Uh, oh, oh, gosh. Uh, this is why I'm, you see, I say this, this is why I'm not a quiz show host, because I'd be crap, because I go off on tangents that I think are more interesting than the questions I've written. Oh, note to self. Uh, I blame what, you. <laughs> yeah, blame me, it's fine. Uh, what song is motherhood? Um, I think if I could sing it, it would, I mean, I think the Waltons, the Waltons um, tune right. for, that, for that TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. blame them. I blame <laughs> them for a lot. I don't, I'm not a very blaming person, but I would say that I, that I hold them responsible. Mm. I watched a lot of it when I was a child. Well, because it was on on a children. Sunday morning, wasn't it? Well, yes, and it keep, kept rerunning. So uh, my yeah. parents popped me in front of the old box to watch that. They were probably having unsuitable sex, but, but the fact is they, they just seemed to want to get rid of me in front of that. And then I got weird ideas about the romanticism of having this great big family that said, night, 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 John boy. And our house is like that. We do that. Just so you know, we really do do that. Oh, I mean, there's a part of me that sort of goes, mm. really? And then there's another part of me going, I know that you do. It's like, yeah, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Love, love you. you. Yeah, love you. No, I love you more. Love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love you most. Hey, shut up now. It's two o'clock in the morning. You'll wake uh, the triplets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The triplets being the youngest of your tribe, right? Um, yes. if, if motherhood was a country. <sighs> Are you really... Being mm -hmm. real with me. Yeah. If it well, was a country, I do, do you know, do you know other people answer this with some yeah. kind of relish? Okay. It, right. it is amazing. Like, honestly, when people sort of, because if you're talking about like somebody, I was chatting to uh, Mandy about coaching and she came up with the country straight away. I was talking to, um, when I spoke to Dr. Garfield and we were talking about therapy, she said, let me get this right. She said China and Belgium and it blew my mind. Uh, and, um, and when we're talking about improv, yeah, people... And, and I think it's just a really interesting thing because, you know, for some of the subjects that we're chatting about and kindly around, trying to get it into a country is impossible. But I like the fact that then that by itself then leads my brain to go to different places, hence me asking them. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I've, I'm not sure whether it is. It's so many countries because it's, it's not really something that you can pin down to a hot, hot Ghana or a, a, you know, or Sweden, a colder. Is I, it Mother Earth? <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm thinking <laughs> mung beans. Oh. And, and, you know, kind of, kind of hugging trees, which is beautiful if you want to hug trees. Mm. I don't know. Um, okay. I, I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's mother, motherhood is so idiosyncratic isn't it it's so personal to the mother yeah. involved yeah. so i think you know mine mine's the gamut from a hot volcano somewhere through to uh, steely ice cold um you know finland and and it's it's you know <laughs> 
Wow. So you're sort of going quite elemental, which has then therefore made my brain go. So in essence, have you watched Frozen 2 recently, which is obviously all about the elements? I haven't seen it. No, oh. I avoided it. Oh, no. I, it's actually, it's far better than you think it's going to be because actually I've watched it twice with, with my son. And, uh, and, and on the second time, I was like, As opposed actually, to anybody else's children. <laughs> yes, as opposed to just the people that I just picked up along the way. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, it was, it's actually quite a big personal development film. And I was like, I only noticed this on the second time. Anyhow, tangent, one last question on the quick fire quiz <laughs> before <laughs> we get distracted by myself. Uh, what, if anything, has stopped you owning motherhood i i've owned motherhood since i was 17 so i don't think anything has stopped me owning it other than the pressure to disown the fact that i'm a mother in corporate environments Mm. so i think i think there has been there were periods in my life where nobody knew i had any children nobody Wow. I mean, obviously, obviously, people did in my real life. <laughs> you knew. <laughs> I knew. The children knew. But <laughs> I mean it in my, in my career. It was assumed yeah. that I didn't have any. Um, and so I let them carry on with their ridiculous assumptions. <laughs> Bless wow. them. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, well, I mean, that's the end of the quick fire quiz. But well done well done that's the end of the quiz i think you you did you did pretty well well you know i i mean paul paxman on university challenge doesn't get so many pushbacks as i just did from you but you know it's fine exactly well well yeah quite a tricky little tricky little bugger yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but that's 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 because you're an interesting soul so motherhood and and you and your world and your identity i mean you run something called school for mothers yes yeah Mm -hmm. uh what made you set that up um well you know my my real career isn't being a professional mother Um, no i know yeah and so that was actually behind it it was because i'd had this you know corporate career and and has to have and actually all through that you know I just since I was 17 because that's when I that's when I had my first child mm. um I I've I've navigated working life as a woman with a tribe of children mm. and and I hear lots of I hear lots of people talking about it um very negatively about how it's dreadful which it can be by the way it's very hard um but I couldn't really I didn't really hear much um, inspiration about the uh, just the you know what it was what it could be the possibilities the mm. skill set that mothers have the the immense power that mothers have uh, you know an influence in the world and and so I wanted to do something about that so I set something up a couple of years ago that bombed oh it was a dire dire kind of fuck up and um and it's because I just, the brand pa- kind of packaging of it was all, all over the show. But the right. actual core of it was great, but the way I brought it to the world was wrong. So I called it Unstoppable Mothers. Oh, can you imagine even the most go-getting, mega successful woman in the city somewhere? And I talked yeah. to lots of them would say, no, that's not me. Yeah. No, no. No, I don't know. I don't, I'm not an unstoppable. And of course, I was like, no, but you are. But you are. Really? Mm. You are? <laughs> that's like, okay, Denisha, that's, that's complete, you know. So it was unrelatable. And then, and then I had a little crash in myself, not professionally, because that's mm. my career, but just personally, I was like, oh, I just can't bring this to the world. I know what I mean, but I'm obviously the only person that understands what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And I was in my pyjamas one Sunday. Um saying oh if I you know if I can't bring this I've got so much to say on this subject and uh, you know I might just well just give up I'll just not what I really need is a school for mothers and then I went oh, oh. <laughs> <Ooh. Maybe. laughs> yeah and I was like yeah I need a school for mothers and and so it isn't that we teach about parenting at all it's nothing mm. to do with parenting um it's about you know I have to be as a woman, a thriving, vibrant, whole woman. Oh, and you have children as well. Mm. You know, and, and so that's, it's not been a, 
it's not been a bedding kind of, you know, I'll make this into a commercial thing. It's because I've lived it every day for decades and talk about it, speak on it, write on it, you know, and I, I can't really see too much positivity around. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's, you know, and I think that's a, a really sort of valid point. I think at the moment there is, there's so much, there is a culture of fear, um, mm. not only to do with motherhood and parenthood, actually, not just to do with mums. Um, there is a culture of fear that I think society-wise we've got going on. And, and actually, I think it's so important. I think one of the reasons that I really wanted you was, yeah, because, yeah, I, you know, I appreciate, you know, and full disclosure, you and I know each other. So this is a, it's a joy because I'm not only talking to someone that's brilliant at what she does, but I also get to chat to my mate on this. Mm. But the thing is, is that you're brilliant at what you do and you have kids. And yet when you in the media with everything, there is so much negativity of, you know, mothers have to do this or people that don't have kids have to do this. And, and, you know, and there's all these different sort of negative fear-based uh, conversations going on, you know, in terms of hit the glass ceiling, break through the glass ceiling, do all of these different things. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, you and I have been playing around in the sort of the corporate world in our different spaces for quite a long time. And there's loads of progress being made in lots of different ways. But that never gets any press because, well, that's positive, right? And for me, it's like, well, actually, that's why it's so important that we talk about, yeah, you're a mum of 10. And that's interesting to a certain point. But actually, I'm more curious of like, so how have you reconciled and how are you now going how do you get over those bumps when you are in that place where it's like, uh, and then you go, woo, like that? Because that's at the heart of, as I understand it, all the work that you do, right? Yeah, I mean, it depends which bumps you mean and the woo ones. I, I, I yeah, I agree completely with what you're saying that, that everywhere we look, there's these um, defined kind of um, models of what it'll be like. You go into corporate, you'll you'll hit up against this. You do this, you'll hit up against that. And and actually, we're so much more self determined than we ever realised. And I do take on board that we're not all starting at the same point. Yeah, yep. I am white. I am privileged. You know, I'm educated, so I get that. I get yep. that, that it brings incredible um, advantage. Mm. And we, uh, you know, I could talk to you about many aspects of my identity that actually didn't put me on the same footing as many of my contemporaries. Um, but essentially, my white skin has helped hugely. Mm. Helped is an understatement. But you know, I'm blonde. There's lots mm. of research about blondes, you know, uh, uh, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of, um, although there's lots of research about people being tall getting on. So I don't know why you and I do <laughs> have a couple of well, short asses. I, I mean, I was just thinking, you know, I was just thinking back to when we first met and, um, <laughs> and you had this beautiful, so, you know, obviously, you know, I meet people, you know, and you, and you and I both go off and do talks and things like that. And, um, and it's, it's really interesting because obviously we exchange business cards. Now I have this, uh, it's a sort of <laughs> thing that I do. So if I'm at a conference and I'm not speaking or emceeing at it, I will consciously make sure that I ask a question over a microphone. Yes, um, you little attention seeker. You. Yes, hi, hi. I haven't had any attention all day, so I need to make sure I ask a question. And then people go, oh, she can speak into a microphone. And I go, yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I'm a keynote speaker. You yes, know. you might recognize me from such places. As, no, but it's, it, it never <laughs> fails to amaze me how many people don't know how to use a microphone but then yeah. I remember uh that actually they hadn't been trained how to use a microphone and then I remember mm. oh yeah that's because I was a DJ anyway tangent so you and I met at an event in a law firm in the city I know it was Moorgate and you were one of the keynote speakers and mm. I was like she's cool and you were sh and you are short <laughs> and that's fine <laughs> you're a little bit taller than me in your heels which is rude because you wear heels and I don't that's a choice thing there's another thing about it how tall are you Em? Five foot two and a little bit. Oh, for God's sake! You're a bloody, you're a bloody Olympian. I'm, I'm five foot. <laughs> Yay! Um, I've got the first person on the podcast that's shorter than me. Woo! Yeah, I'm five foot, literally. <laughs> you dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I remember then I asked a question you'd set some you know you'd set a really good challenge I even remember what it was that's how good you are at what you do right mm -hmm. you'd even set the challenge of I want you to write down and tell the person sitting next to you what one thing you're going to achieve by the end of this year and I want you to own it because you're going to say it out loud and it was it was 
it was language cle- cleverer than that and better than I've just done. Oh, dear <laughs> God. And, uh, and, and I remember sort of writing down, I'm going to be featured in Diva. Yes, for those of you that haven't noticed, I'm gay. Hurrah, move on. And, um, oh, God, are you? I know, I know. Let's talk to my business manager. <laughs> I know, but here. don't worry, you're safe because you're not here in the studio with me. Um, otherwise, there'd be all sorts of terrible things going on. Anyway, and, and so I wrote down, oh, I want to be featured in Diva. And so I then grabbed hold of the microphone, not grabbed, asked, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you sort of went, okay, that's great. Well done. And I put, sat down. And then at lunch, I was like, the person I want to speak to is you. So I went up in my very sort of Stroud way and we handed over business cards and we sort of went, yeah, we'll connect. And you recently found the business card <laughs> that I gave you with your notes about me. What were the three words that you wrote? <laughs> um, do you remember? Oh, I, do. I was saying it was short. Was it yeah. short? blonde lesbian or short yes. <laughs> lesbian yes yes I mean I, just, I had to remember you didn't I I mean I knew of course but but it was so funny I was going through you know I was doing some personal admin over the Christmas just before Christmas I was like oh my god I have to show this to Em this is so ridiculous but isn't it amazing in terms of you know our identity and how we see people you know and it's that thing of and I've witnessed you you know like if we've been speaking at the same event I've witnessed how people uh, and I wonder how you feel about this. Mm. When people find out that you've got 10 kids, that that's the only thing that they want to talk to you about. How does that make you feel? Well, one of the, one of the issues about that is that basically it eclipses pretty well everything that I am and who, what I've done. I've done some really huge things in the world. I mean, I really have like being an, an a, a pole explorer um you know i mean or polar explorer all sorts of things that <laughs> most people would go you what <laughs> for a second there i literally went a pole ex- and i was like hang on a minute did you do research into pole dancing that i didn't know about and then i was like no it's the po- oh, polar you now have to tell us a little bit about the polar thing you can't drop that in and then not just give us just a little morsel well I- go on well, I was at I was at a CEO really dull networking um, <laughs> event, and it was actually a woman's one. So it was very unusual that it was that dull. Everybody was in dark suits. I mean, really, right. it was terribly traditional. And I I I I don't go to things like that. So um, so it was it was rare that I would find myself in it. And I looked around. I clocked in myself. I am so bored. This is so mm. dull. I've got to find somebody to talk to you that doesn't look like they are going to be like this so it was it was just very navy blue gray um you know and that's unusual because a lot of women wear a lot of color these days but anyway so I sat next to this lovely woman and we just got chatting and I said you know what what are you what are you what have you been doing recently and she said well actually not nothing much to be honest bit of a dull year I said, well, that's great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and anyway, the upshot was that she just actually won the European Woman of the Year. Yeah, so yeah. quite the opposite, but she's so humble and we yeah. got on really well. Her name's Fiona Thornewell and truly well. And we've known each other ever since that. And we got chatting and she said, you know, what are you up to? And I said, well, I'm thinking of an adventure. Really need to do something in my life that's, you know, just a bit, something a bit different. Mm. And she said, what kind? And I said, I'm fancying something physical. I really think I'm going to do something quite extreme, Fiona. She said, mm, I'll meet you after, uh, you know, let's meet in a couple of weeks and we'll have a coffee and we'll chat about it. And I said, oh, fab. Met her for, uh, you know, for a coffee a couple of weeks later. I said, oh, you know, just, just so you know, um, I, we're just setting a polar expedition to um, commemorate Shackleton's trip to the right. pole. Right. And, and I said, oh, yes, yeah, that, well, that's exciting. That's be wonderful for everyone. That's lovely. And she said, no, 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 seriously, I'd like you to come and audition. It wasn't the word she used. It's <laughs> <laughs> not exactly an audition. But, but nevertheless, she said, all you need to do is drag a couple of tractor tyres across a muddy field. And she said, I've got a really, really strong feeling that you'll get in. And I said, yeah, but I just don't think that's my thing. I've had hypothermia a couple of times in ordinary UK weather. Mm. And it'll be minus what? And she said, oh, probably about minus 20, maybe 30. Mm. And um, yes. So anyway, the upshot was that I turned up for this audition with a lot of strapping 
rugby playing like big big men right in, uh, tiny t-shirts you know with, that must have been awful for you having well, to look no, at that <laughs> no sleeves in you know, freezing <laughs> weather <laughs> and i managed to drag my tire and i got a place and this was a crack world you know team um of explorers and the odd <laughs> odd being the right word actually the odd uh novice wow um, and um it it was i i uh trained for 18 months dragging two tractor tires for three miles a day uh with a special harness that was was made for me um and in the cotswolds uh lanes i was famous for actually i pushed pushed a buggy <laughs> with a dog <laughs> And walk for three hours, three miles every single day. It didn't matter what weather, I was out every day. Now, the the important thing to know about this is, the, the, and the completely mad thing, is that when I looked at this proposition of right, okay, um, I think I'll just train to go to the pole. Um, uh, I thought I'll just pop this into my schedule. Right. Yeah, I didn't think. Mm. Um how what is going to come out of my ordinary working life which was very mm. busy was before the triplets um i actually put it in now that probably wasn't that clever mm. but it does say the spirit the, the spirit of of um motherhood often is you know pilot in which isn't always great and in my case i came a cropper um <laughs> very much a cropper so um i made myself very ill with the training and um because i really was burning every piece of the candle both right. ends and the middle mm. um and i was really committed we raised a huge amount of money uh, got a tv deal i mean really Actually, i think lorraine kelly was on the team yes so i mean it, it was a big it was a big event I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not every time that you celebrate 100 years of Shackleton's trip, but you all come home alive, of course. That was the caveat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, always, that's always a good idea, isn't it? Mm. And, you're, and, it is, and it's amazing, isn't it, with these, with these sort of moments, you know, and these things. And, uh, and I think you have just hit the nail on the head there in terms of this sometimes is, it is the, at the heart of, of motherhood, but actually it's the heart of being a woman. It's about giving yourself that permission to sort of accept offers and, and very much from the impro world that as you know I'm from it is that whole idea about accepting offers and really sort of seeing what the world and other people are potentially giving you and you sort of sometimes just need to kind of go you know what I'm going to say yes and then I'm going to see where I go with that but it's also about taking some time and taking a step back and making sure that your yes is then going to serve you and the rest of the world around you right well that's that's a really good point and and so I, I think it's about crashing out of or nudging out of because it doesn't have to be as much as crash but just kind of nudging outwards the idea of what you need to be when you're a mother so for me it's been i i wouldn't have lived sort of a, a vibrant kind of varied life uh, if if i decided at 17 right as i was told by the way that one i'd ruined my life mm. and two by having continuing a pregnancy that was unexpected um, and and also, you know, kind of taking, not listening to what people say is my truest place, which, of mm. course, my children are, you know, the centre of my life. They always will be. Yeah. But I'm actually the real core of my life and who, yeah. who I am. And therefore, when that opportunity came along, it's a mere example, mm. really, um, you know, when that came along, as I didn't expect it to, it's not really my forte. Um, I, I didn't think, whoa, good God. I just thought, well, let's have a crack at this then. <laughs> let's and, go for this. And it is, and it is amazing, but, you know, because, you know, something that... You know, I, I sometimes sort of still get a little bit shocked that, I, that I'm a mum. You know, I, I didn't really sort of, it wasn't originally on my life path and everything like that. And, um, and I think it's one of the things that you and I in the past have sort of talked about. It is that thing of, so where does, I'm, I'm Emma and then I also am a mum and then I've got all of these different facets that make up me just like they make up you. You know, I've got all the different sort of sides and roles and things that I play. But for me, one of the key things is like, 
it's it's making sure that in order for for me to be the best mum that I can be to William, I realise that I need to be the happiest that I can be. And I witness with other mums that sometimes it does seem like there's the the dialogue that people forget that. Yeah, well, I I actually think a lot of a lot of women only put themselves in the equation if it benefits their children. Like, oh, okay, I'll do self-care if I'm role modeling it for my children. Oh, okay, I'll keep my career going if, if I show my daughter and my son that it's, it's possible to do these things. What? Where did you go? Like, what, why is it now always in reference to them? <laughs> How about you? Where did you go? Why, why men aren't, you know, told, well, once you become a father, you're not the center of your life. And I think the real problem is that we're not the center of our lives. You know, at, once we have children, we're told, actually, now it's about that. Now it's about others. It's mm. always about others. And then mm. when there's, if there's a few bits around the edges, you can, you can have that, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I nearly fell into the trap um, myself. I was like, right, I'm pregnant. Okay, now I'm pregnant. I must do all of these different things. Uh, so I must do pregnancy yoga. And it's like, but I don't, I don't do yoga. But no, I must do pregnancy yoga because that's what everybody tells me in Wandsworth that you must do. For those of you that aren't listening, Wandsworth is a borough in London that's very well known as being quite white and middle class. Uh, mm. So I was like, must do. And then literally, I took a moment. I booked myself onto this pregnancy yoga course which i'm sure was perfectly fine and i just went what am i doing i don't no i don't because i was getting more stressed about the fact that i hadn't done yoga for about 10 years so i was going to be shit at it than it was in terms of anything of any benefit and i was doing it because suddenly i started to lose track of who i am you know and it was something like i don't particularly like yoga but now i'm pregnant i should do it well yeah yeah, it's a bit it's a bit like having a caricature of what is a mother supposed to be like? Oh, let me do that then. You know, I'll I'll start picking that up because that's that's what mummies do. You know, mm. they they go to yoga, they 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 learn baby massage, which by the way I have done over the years. And then I thought, what the bloody hell am I doing? This isn't me at all. Mm. Why am I doing that? I don't do yoga because I cannot hold a straight face when anybody breaks wind. <laughs> I cannot. I just can't. I've tried. I've gone to yoga retreats. Anybody breaks wind, farts, whatever we want to call it. My children call it body burps. Okay. Oh, hello there. It's Barbara. Oh, I knew we were going to get on. I'm just saying hello to Lucia. I've heard you're lovely. I, I haven't got blonde hair, but I think we get on very well. You see, I once went to a yoga class. Me and Edna went to a yoga class. And yet, well, Edna was next to me and she did the biggest fart. You should have heard it. It was huge. And then I was sitting, well, I was in this position. I think it was called the mountain position. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, the mountain then fell down because I was <laughs> laughing so hard. And then this yoga teacher, her name was Sally Bridges. I didn't like Sally Bridges. Did you know Sally? No, no. no. Well, so Sally her. Bridges, she was a nightmare, right? So Sally Bridges, she then told me off. She was like, bye can you just get back into your mountain? I was like, I can't. She just did a fart. And I know that sometimes Edna follows through. So I was just having this imagination that there was Edna after falling over and farting. And I was doing the mountain pose. Do you know how to do the mountain pose? I bet you do. Mm, that's what's got me into trouble. Oh, has it? Yeah, you see, because it gets me into trouble. And you know, earlier you said that you went off into the, you were, you were going to go off into the North Pole. Well, I've looked at the map and I saw where the North Pole is. It was a very long way. So I wouldn't suggest that you do that. What I think you need to do is I think you need to come and find me. Now, I quite often sit in billies and we could do a really good thing. We could blow up balloons and then send them off to the sky. Although I don't know if we're allowed to do that because environmentally, I don't know if that's a very good idea. But can you crochet? Because you're a mother, so therefore you must be able to crochet. Well, Barbara, actually, I'm, I'm okay at crocheting, but I do knit. I knit really Ooh, well. Oh, I like knitting too. What's the best thing you knit? I do knit one, pull one. What do you do? Well, I'm currently, I haven't finished it, obviously, because it's Christmas, but I'm knitting a very beautiful Christmas mini skirt. Oh, I love it. 
I love it. So maybe you could knit me one. And what I'll do is I had, I might knit you a little negligee because, you know, you could wear a nice knitted negligee because I think that sounds nice. And I think as a mother of 10, you probably need to feel quite sexy. So a nice knitted negligee, perhaps with some nipple tassels. Would you like that? Oh, yes. Well, I make nipple tassels as a, oh, as a side thing. I knew we'd get on. Oh, yes. see, you're brilliant. I don't have any kids. I don't like them, frankly, because I think they're horrible and they smell. But apart from that, I think you're brilliant. So could you come and come and see me at Billy's, which is my local cafe, but not bring any of your children? Because I don't like children. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to get away from them. Oh, that's brilliant. And then we could go to a yoga class and we can point and push people over. Does that sound okay? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Oh, Can't brilliant. Wait. Right, well, Emma probably wants to come back and get really profound and deep about motherhood and identity oh, or something. But, oh, you know, please, it's been me. so lovely chatting to you. I think you're brilliant. You're my hero. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, she's lovely, isn't she? Yeah, she's all, she's all right, actually, uh, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. Yeah. Have you done her long? I, you know what? Barbara has been... Barbara's been around for a, for a long time, actually. And uh, yeah, and Barbara's always been, <laughs> Barbara's been waiting at the wings. That's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. Um, and she's been waiting for, for the right place where she gets to meet, in her mind, very cool people. Mm. And it was only when um, I was Emma, I decided that I was going to do clowning around. And then Barbara was literally like, pick me, pick me. And I was like, oh, that would oh, kind I can of make imagine. sense. Yeah. I mean, mm. and so she's, she's been around for a while, you know, she's, she's definitely. <laughs> does she do, does she, does she do a nice kind of leopard print negligee? <laughs> She, Could, she yeah, do I, I, Could you ask her if she can put an order I'll, in for I'll, I'll check in with her yeah, and you. I'll let you know um, how, mm. how quickly Barbara could turn around a, a mm. leopard skin negligee, uh, uh, um, yes. which I, for some reason, can't say, which is weird. Leopard print, it's, it's a particular, I want it in a, because she's going to crochet it, so I want to... Uh. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sure I'm sure she'll let you know. Uh, you know, I'm sure mm. sure she'll get you in touch by Barbara Post or something like that. Yeah. Good, yeah, because I yeah, do yeah. want to feel sexy again. Well, I think mother. that's always I think that's always good. Yeah. And, and you know, like in order, what what really fuels you now? Because you're obviously, you know, as you've sort of very loosely sort of alluded to. You're a super successful businesswoman in your own right. You also had an academic career and mm. still sort of can dabble in that world. You'd go off and do speaking. And yeah, you've got a family. What is it that, that's fueling you at the moment? Um, well, it's funny. I was thinking about it this morning. I was walking my mini Dachshund. It was called Dickie. Um, I mean, the there's field. so many comedy doors that have just opened, but I'm mm, leaving them shut. I'm leaving them shut, people. Yeah, yeah, I know. Dickie the Dachshund, Ashley's full name is Dickie van der Sausage. And <laughs> I know, I know. He's, he's, he's a large character, but he's very tiny. Yeah. And um, I always wanted a tiny sausage. And basically, <laughs> basically, I was thinking, oh, sorry, I'm going to have, I'm going to laugh now. Go on. I was, I was thinking about something that I haven't really talked about ever and I was thinking thank fuck I've grappled my libido mm. down and it actually it, it it actually relates to my sausage dog right now, now all my all my adult life I'm obviously still an adult fun yeah I was gonna say hang on a minute <laughs> and I'm really not impressed? that old but no <laughs> no but I've, I always had this insatiable libido for life and also sex right so i think that a, so much of my energy was put into that's why i've got 10 kids listeners you know um there's a, <laughs> there's a bit of a link here um and uh, but so much of my energy was was focused on creating big business and career looking after kids but also getting my leg over yeah and now as interested in getting my leg over, um, but there, but there's just, there's just less um, ferocious, ferocious ferocity to it. I would say, okay. and 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 so now I feel a little bit more normal. I don't know what that means, but for me, I feel like oh, I have a lot more capacity to do the work in the world that actually I need to do. And and I've done a lot of work. Of course, I have all through that other period of my life. Right, I have. But there's just something that's there's a fervor in a slightly different place, and um, linked to my sausage dog. 
love my sausage dog, really love him, um, love men even more, by the way. But but the fact is, I just there's a there's a I don't know there's a there's a a focus and a purpose right to me so what does fuel me um making a difference i think making a real difference so disrupting being a disruptor Mm -hmm. uh seeing change Mm -hmm. um and and that can be sowing seeds that can be Mm -hmm. sowing seeds that (laughs) oh yes there's some puns here I mean, um, the, again, there was just so many there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually just let that sit. Anything. I just, I just, I just can't. I can't. You know, I was like, there's sowing seeds. You've got a sausage dog called Dick. Oh. You know, you like men still. I mean, there's so many. But actually, even I underneath, <laughs> you don't, you don't need to because, because. <laughs> Actually, firstly, it's really refreshing to hear women, talk, you know, a woman talking about her mm. libido because I don't think enough of us do. No, and we then, don't. And then, secondly, the, the the thing that really resonated with me is is that thing about that word purpose. Mm. And just to add more to it, I feel as I witness what it is that you're putting out in the world, and of course, we'll talk, your social media links will all be on this, and so you can all get in touch and see what brilliant stuff she's up to. But for me, I think the main thing is is that it does seem like you are it's not even driven. It's you're in a place where it's like, this is me and this is what I have to do. And I think sometimes when I see really powerful women and men in that place, they're just powerful human beings Mm -hmm. in that place where they're doing what they are here to do. There is something so powerful and something so magnetic about it that everything else around them, you can just imagine is just sort of, you know, is flowing and is moving and is shifting. And I, and I think you're right. I think there's that, that part of you that is the disruptor is the fact that for a lot of people, you could have made the choice that your whole dialogue, everything that you're going out and promoting, everything that you're talking about in this world of entrepreneurship would be about, I've got 10 kids. And that within itself, probably for in terms of a business and running and things like that, for a lot of people, that would be it. And that would be enough. But actually, I love the fact that what you're doing is going, that's a part of me and one that you love dearly, but it's not all of you. And as a result, that's why I wanted you to be here talking about motherhood, because it's not, it's not a simple, you know, you're not only a mother, you're so much more than that, right? It's very, very easy to get subsumed and drown in everything to do with raising children mm. and, to, and to forget self and to, and to disown the parts of ourselves and so you know that's why that libido is so important so libido is not just about sex drive libido is about a a an appetite it's an appetite for life and so my appetite is enormous and my appetite is to bring change where it's required and in this lifetime what i have immense um, you know, on top of the professional career that I have, you know, in boards and with senior teams, I actually happen to have produced a, an unusually large amount of children. Um, and and that, that gives me, and across some decades, so that mm. gives me a platform that should I be willing to stick my head up and, and, and say things, and that's actually been my biggest Achilles heel, mm. actually being visible and not vocal, but visible, yep. then I can, I can make a difference. And even if that's a handful of women, even that's one woman that says, oh my God. Mm. Now in my case, actually it is more because, mm. because I've done so much, you know, I've really had to, I've really had to chat to myself. Like, yeah, now, yeah, come yeah. on, if yeah. you don't do this, who the fuck's going to do this, girl? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, there's nothing else on that. Um, yeah, and you're so right. And it is, it's that thing, it's, um, I think it was Brené Brown who, you know, who's what I really like. Um, mm. And one of the things that she said was, you know, like, if you're not even in the ring, then I don't really care what you think about. I've obviously paraphrased that into Emma language completely. Well, what, she, what, what she actually says also is... There's, she differentiates when she's talking in the same territory and exactly that. She says, show up. And, mm. and she says, the most important thing is to show up. Mm. And actually the next thing is to have your ass kicked. And most people mm. think that it's to kick ass, like show up, kick ass. No, yep. no, it's not. It's show up, get your ass kicked, get back up. 
Yeah. And that's when she says, that's when she says, I don't care about... I'll Did just, something just fall over there? Yeah, actually, actually, it, it was, yeah. Uh, under my desk, I've got some... <laughs> I've got some shoe boxes with some really unsuitably. <laughs> I mean, th- there, shoes. there is Brené Brown in action. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I'm going to knock them down and I'm going to build them back up. <laughs> yes, people. Exactly, and and that's it. So, and she says, if you're going to if you're going to criticise her, yeah, which obviously she's taken a lot of flack. Yep. Um, as well as a lot of adulation, but a lot of flack from people. If you aren't making, if you aren't doing it, and you're not getting your ass kicked. Mm. shut up <laughs> she's not interested and nor am i it's like you know it's, it's not it's of no concern all i know is it's my my job mm. you know and my my messages are bigger than me it is not about me yeah it's not about denusha and her perfect little life because it isn't perfect and i'm not a perfect mm. parent and i'm very ordinary but i have i, I have to bring this bit out the bit that I can do and I think that's the responsibility we have Mm. so yeah and that and that within itself you know I I think that for all of us can be really challenging so you know as as, Mm. in order to get to that place where you're okay being all of you you know and and I've I've made no sort of qualms both both within this podcast so far and and you know various different talks and and also my show that I'm doing currently it has been a real journey for me as Emma Stroud to get to this place where I'm like fuck it I am a clown this is what I do but I'm really interested in people I know loads of really cool stuff and you know what I'm gonna own this and that within itself has taken a lot of work to get to that place. And it's like, and I'm not, I'm not going to be scared anymore. And, you know, and I, I even did a, I did a quick a keynote on um, Thursday. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I was talking, I mean, it was brilliant. There was like about 700 people and they gave a clown a catwalk. It was so much fun. I was like, oh my God, I've got a catwalk. Oh my God. Ah, you that can imagine. Is, I was like, it's so much fun. And, but as I was doing it, I realized, you know, and I sort of, I came off stage and I realized that it was, it was a really, really important gig for me. Not because of the content. The content I'd sort of, I might have done, you know, a few times before with the kind of messages. But actually, it was a really important gig because I completely and utterly owned every single thing that I said. But bigger than that, I just went, I didn't, <sighs> there was no performance, which for someone who's a performer was a really big shift. I rocked up just as I'm rocking up in this conversation as I do on all the other podcasts and I'm just M and I'm M with the different hats on and you know, and there's, yeah, I know the Barbara gets involved and everything like that. And it's like, I'm me with all of my flaws, my fuck ups, and also hopefully some, some sort of modicum of talent or some, some sort of modicum of something. And that, was that moment where I went, oh, that's how you can go and then change the world. Because there's lots of people then who, you know, they can take pot shots and they can do whatever they might want to do. But actually it's okay because I'm coming from a place where I'm just being the best I can be. And that's all we can do, right? Well, that is, an, isn't it? Isn't it the most wonderful thing that you were spreading permission? Like they didn't really hire you, I'm sure. Like, M, could you show up and spread permission? I bet they didn't. They hired you for something else, but actually that's what you were doing. Like, but you have to be it. You have to walk it and and, and it's a it doesn't it doesn't just um you know, you don't wake up and go, Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna <laughs> strut every little part of me today. No, it's 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 actually most people that can do this are and are like this have gone through a torturous <laughs> journey to do so mm. and really usually embraced hell along yep. that and and lots of failure and lots of i mean just intense questioning about whether we're enough which human being doesn't ask am i enough how do i stack up how am mm. i doing and 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 you know cry that they're not enough and and, and that's the thing, every, every success and every movement maker and change maker doesn't wake up like that. It's mm. the journey that's taken them there. And, and it's a really big risk. It's it the risk. Is. Yeah, it is the risk. And it is also that thing, isn't it, of um, I think stepping from my own experience, and I can only ever talk about my own because, you know, it's my truth. It is, it's stepping from existing and within existing is sort of within a, a small sort of remit of numbers to realizing that you can live and you can live fully. And I think one of the things that drew me to you originally when we met 
and that question and all of that stuff was I could see that there was a woman that was living and you weren't just existing. And I think now I know your history and your backstory and you know, and you and I've got to know each other over the years. I can understand why you've managed to do that. But I think for so many people that that permission piece and you know you know that I always kind of make parallels to clowning because this is called clowning around a lot about clowning is about giving yourself permission to really see and permission to really feel and permission to really be which is why it's been such a a, a, a transformational journey for me to get back into my clowning world and actually and I think with all women and potentially men as well I think it is about that permission and how do we give ourselves that that permission to be all of us, however that might manifest, I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to become a clown or a mother of 10 or whatever else it might be, but it's how do you give yourself that permission to, yeah, to be all of you. Mm. Are you, you, are you hoping for an answer? No, I mean, I'm fine with a hmm. That was quite good too. You know, I liked mm. it. I liked mm. it. Good, good. I, I did train <laughs> as a therapist at one point. So that's oh, you could, you could tell start. that. You, mm. Oh my God. At that mm. point, you could so hear that your, your, your head had moved slightly to the side and you were, mm. Mm. that was a... Just ingesting what you... Just, just So that you can, <laughs> you, can, you can do your inner work on it. And then yeah. I remembered that we've got listeners who might be thinking, is she going to ever say anything? <laughs> Or is she just a, a monkey? Have, have you done what, I mean, have you had to do, you know, uh, what I've had to do in terms of have a really fucking great team of people support you to get to this place where you are less afraid? Because, of course, we're all still afraid all the time. Um, but So you're less afraid so that you're living on purpose. Is that one of the things that you've had to do? Uh well, for a long time, I thought I was invincibly fearless, which of course was a complete fuck up because that's not, not the truth at all. Um, so, you know, that's a really good mask. Uh, the, the team, I'm not there anymore, don't worry. Um, I, I don't have a big team. I have a small but mighty team. So I'm a lot more inner circle than mm. that. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't had a big team. But mm. the team I have is a very deep deep team so I have I have a small circle of friends and we have um, business bitch sessions nice Um, and that's where the bitchiness can come out yep uh because and and that's where we can speak those things that we ordinarily wouldn't say like really don't you think that social media page is just a load of wank Mm. I mean for god's sake Mm. I have can I tell you my bitch moment which always amazes people can I tell you where I have my bitch moment go on I don't know I I I, I, yeah oh gosh I'm putting this out to the world so so (laughs) so I I don't really have a massive bitchy part of me but I am aware that I think all women do have a potential so I'm bitchy oh I'm men yeah definitely (laughs) men um so my bitchy part comes out when I watch, which I get a little bit obsessed by, America's Next Top Model. <laughs> Suddenly, this inner bitch, because obviously I don't really give a shit about fashion, nor do I know anything about it, nor do I really care about <laughs> what's going on in their world. <laughs> and I have sat with some of the people that know me really well, and they're like, who are you when you watch this program? I like, look at her. She shouldn't be wearing pink with her hair. She looks fucking ridiculous. And they're like, where have you come from? I'm like, I don't know. So I think yeah. I'm just... <laughs> it's honestly, having because, space for that. Yeah. It's having somewhere that's trusted that yeah. someone doesn't go, oh my God, she's just a bitch. No, yeah. no that's, that's a small piece. That's there. And actually that it's safe. So I curate that. So nice. I do not, haven't had a monthly bitch. And, and I save, I was on the call this morning and I said, oh yes, we've, you know, we, we need to have, like, I need to put this, I need to say this. Mm. And, and there are just a very small amount of people that I know that doesn't subsume the rest of me. Mm. And, and, and so it's, it's really, yeah, I mean, it's very deep, but it's, you know, those, those friendships are deep and there's not loads. Of course, support. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, how the hell could I have, could I be doing what I'm doing without Mm. all sorts of machinations of childcare? No, I don't have a cleaner. No, I don't have a team of nannies. No, I don't have an investment banker husband. In fact, he's invisible, as you know. Mm. Um, 
And although my daughter, Serafina, one of my triplets, has decided that she's married Dickie the Dachshund, which is a little bit troubling. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping, Slightly worrying. Yeah, I'm hoping. She says, that's my husband. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. All right. Um, well, you know, so um, we are a single parent family. <laughs> Got to get your male influence. Yeah. Away. Don't, and don't worry, listeners. Uh, she's only six, isn't she? So it's not like yes. she's, you know, over 18. So no. I'm marrying. <laughs> that would be a whole different world of slightly concerning and wrong <laughs> yes, yes. but but it's you know I don't have what a lot of people would imagine is this tribe of very you know wonderful northern nannies and um, mm. I am in contact with the three or four nannies I think it's four over the years who've stayed long-term and been part-time nannies and we're right. all friends which I love yeah um, you know so again it's demonstration of deep they become family and mm. I love their families, mm. um, and and yeah. So I, and we it's a it's a jigsaw. It's just a it's a mess. It's yeah, but it's but it's a perfect. And that's the thing. It's in its mess. It's completely perfectly formed, right? And yes. that's what that's what's so beautiful, you know. And I and I think you know I think I've said on previous episodes, you know, I I've got a a, a team, so you know, I've got a I've got a PT and I've got a coach and I've got a therapist and a healer and and then I've got somebody that comes around and helps me and and you know, and I've got the best VA in the world. And what does, hang on, hang on, what does that hmm? person come around and help you with? You've what my house? Rather- <laughs> I, I realised I was like that's really fucking vague, and I yes. I'm rushing. So 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 I'm okay. So <laughs> so I'm a clown, right? And uh, and I'm I'm really good at lots of things, and I'm really bad at ironing. So I'm just putting it out there. I am terrible at ironing, as every single person that knows me very well would attest to. If you see me wearing a shirt that I've ironed myself, it looks like it hasn't been ironed. And somebody actually came up to me once and went, like, "Em, when are you gonna are you gonna iron?" That? And I went, I have. And I literally got quite annoyed with them. I have. Um, I have done my best ironing. Yeah. Can I can I come round yours and teach you to iron? Um, yeah, okay. Okay. I could be taught how to iron. Do I don't you, know how do you much know I... there's there's a system to it. Has a anyone pair? actually Pa- no, no one's ever told me. That's the thing. Oh, it's I, one of I those things, that. and I've sort of gone, "Do I want to learn?" I'm like, "Probably could if somebody." But so I have some. So she comes around and she does my ironing. She also might clean my house as well, uh, right. because you know. But again, it's a support team, and it's about yes. understanding. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like on the time when I'm not working and doing stuff and living. It's like now I get it. Some people really love cleaning. I'm not a massive fan, so therefore. You know, it's it's finding the team that will work for you, right? Can I can I just say you've just said something that's troubling to me, and I Go need on. to ask. Is it about, about the fact that I can't iron? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, good, good. I don't even iron. I don't have an ironing board. I don't bother. But oh. but I do know how to iron really well. I just oh. chose. It's one of the things that I chose. So I'm very strategic about what am I going to do with oh. my time? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I don't have an ironer. I don't have someone that does it, and I don't. But you know. Um, and we look good. We look good, all of us. So it's fine. I know. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but you just said, when I'm not working and I, when I'm living, what the hell do you mean that you have two, two like categories of when you're working and when you're living? Yeah, I don't know why Ooh. I just said that because that's not actually true. <laughs> Ooh. It just sort of came out in a bit of a weird way. Yeah, no, that's not true. Uh, okay, I, good. Please yeah, do don't worry. Don't, do, worry. don't worry. Don't worry. Can think, we tweak it? Can we rewind? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's. We'll rewind that bit. I mean, obviously, we'll keep it in because it's all meant to be of course, no, brilliantly and perfect. But I think what I mean is that somebody. This is where this stemmed from. Somebody once said to me, "On the because you're busy doing what you love doing, Em, and you don't have you know huge amounts of spare time. Do you want to be spending your spare time?" doing the thing that then doesn't make you particularly happy, which was, which was cleaning my house. And I went, Oh yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So they were like, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, so it's a portioning. It's it's what's important to you. What do you need to the time we've got? It's precious, isn't it? So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah, okay, um, I can sit back down. Thank the Lord. I mean, this is this is always going to be the challenge, you know. When I'm, <laughs> when I'm chatting to someone who's a coach of like really important people, and then I say something and go, ah, it's yeah, I'm going to get picked <laughs> up on it. Oh God, I don't so, know who's I don't know who's interviewed here. Who I don't even know my own name, but it's fine. Um, one final thing. <laughs> yes, darling. <laughs> Welcome to the world of planning around. Who knows where we're going to go? No one knows. Ta-da! 
uh, one final thing. So if people have listened to this and, and they're in a place where they want to give them some more permission, whatever that, mother or a father or not, because I'd like to think that people aren't, who aren't oh, parents yeah. have also listened to this episode. How, how can people give themselves more permission? What would be your advice if somebody came to you with that question, like I just have helpfully right now? Mm, well, I think, I think that we get wrapped up in the word permission. I mean, I think it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a complex word, isn't it? For, for, it's got um, three syllables. So it's already complex. Permission. Why um, enough? Is it four? No, it's per- permission. permission. Three. <laughs> three. Don't worry, it's three. You were I, right. T- talking to a dyslexic clown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think one of the missing pieces of permission is getting in touch with what we really want. So dissecting what we've been told by others. Mm. You know, and that can be family, that can be school, it can be where we work it can be what we're telling ourselves it can be what our partner's telling us everybody else what what everyone else is telling us and then what we our opinion what we you know if we could disentangle from that what would we do what would who would we be you know so it's like that thing that you said about the yoga the pregnancy yoga it's like oh that's what you do when you're expecting a baby well great go off find that in one words one's worth go and do this find a baby uh, you know a, a pregnancy class to go and meet other pregnant women all those things well that's mm. because we've been told that that's the appropriate legitimate way to behave but actually it's like when we get in touch with is that me do I, do I want that? Is that true? Is that true for me? Then we can begin the process of getting clear on what do I want? Because we can't give ourselves permission unless we actually know the dissonance, the kind of gap between mm. how we are and what we were hoping for. So there's a gap there and, oh, it just takes a bit of time to go, well, where did that come from? Or even not to go, where did it come from? But, oh, that's actually not, that's actually jet lagged. That's out of that's out of date. I d- yeah. yeah, that was good for me when I was a young woman. That was good for me when I was a guy then. Mm. It's only good for me now. I don't want mm. that. Which is why I say about the libido, you know, it's not that my interest has changed. Of course it hasn't. It's just that I have a different relationship of, okay, well, I know what that gets me. It's not just the 10 children. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of engrossment and dedication. Mm. <laughs> you know so it's like okay then you're at choice permission and choice are, are very much together and um courage yeah obviously, obviously the word courage is well it's not obvious but it comes from core which is heart so having compassion and heart for ourselves you know yeah and i you know that that all really really resonates with me and i think you're right actually taking time for ourselves and taking some breaths mm-hmm. and did you creating... say breasts not breasts and look i might be gay but i'm not obsessed breaths <laughs> breaths hang on Breath. I, my diction is to be improved some more hang on one second i'll make sure i do it better breaths uh, breathing breaths. yes um, yeah. and mm-hmm. and once we've done those you know <sighs> just giving ourselves that space to check in with where we are now versus where we were then, I think is so important. You know, I quite often use the analogy of uh, conveyor belts that we're all on lots of different conveyor belts. We're jumping from one to the other to the other. And quite often they're at varying speeds and that's all great. But I always just kind of think about it just occasionally just get off all of those conveyor belts and stand still because if you look behind you there's probably some doors that don't even have conveyor belts that you hadn't even noticed or you might just check in and go actually I don't want to be running at that pace anymore or I want to be running faster or whatever it might be but it's only when we get off them that we can actually see the full picture and as you say we can actually work out where am I at not with what society or others tell us how to be and I think and I think that's one of the things that you do so beautifully Um, And so on that, with things being done so beautifully, um, how do people find you? Where should they seek out you? On what tools and mediums? Oh, I mean, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I've got a a snazzy little number over there Mm -hmm. uh, that's 
my professional LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Insta on school dot four dot mothers, mm-hmm. uh, school for mothers dot com, Danishamalinadurban dot com. I'm a bit of a tart. Go in the <laughs> Well, we've heard all about your libido, so it makes sense that you're on all social media things as well. Um, And obviously, we will put those links in the notes so that people can find you, you you know. Um, Can I just say, I've really enjoyed this. Oh, thanks, mate. So have I. Yeah. Great fun. I mean, it's all right, isn't it? You know. And thank you. Thank you for um, the intro to Barbara. She's she's great. I'm I'm looking forward to that negligee. I mean, I, you know, the the fun that she is going to have knitting that is, (laughs) it's going to be immense. It's going to be immense. Um, You know, I'm I'm pleased that you got to meet her and she's, she was obviously delighted to meet you, which is splendid. Um, Thank you ever so much, my dear, for uh, being on Clowning Around Motherhood. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you once more. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. It's hard to say too much after that, friends, isn't it? I mean, it really is. Uh, what can I say? This world is a better place with Emma and her clowns in it, right? I mean, it has to be. Now, next week, I'm bringing you an episode called Frost. And my guest is Nina Farr. The focus of our conversation is on having the best Christmas we can after separation and or divorce. It can be a really intense time, can't it? I I hope you'll join me for that conversation. I know it's going to be brilliant. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now. Lots of love. Thank you for tuning in to the School for Mothers podcast. To continue the conversation and keep your dose of inspiration up, head over to schoolformothers.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find bonus content from Danusha and her guests on habits, recommendations, books, best apps, time-saving secrets, life hacks, health, sleep and anything in between. That's schoolformothers.com forward slash podcast. 